Good morning. Welcome to today's Morning Moxie with Larissa. On my YouTube channel, I speak about all the things that are affecting women today. And in particular, I offer bite-sized pieces of inspiration and motivation to help you jumpstart your day. I will offer, discuss topics on uh, business leadership, business management and operations, as well as personal development. And I am in particularly speaking to my ladies, my lady moguls, because it is our time and we really need to take control of our financial future. So I'm encouraging ladies to become a multipreneur and I'm doing my part, I hope, to help you embrace the many facets of your financial future. Now, uh, if you haven't done so already, I invite you to please subscribe to my channel. As you know, that helps with the ever-changing algorithms. And today's topic is one that is near and dear to my heart. And that's every time I read about the economic impact or the economic, I don't know, <clears throat> issues, if you will, affecting women today, I'm inspired to do another podcast like today, which is a podcast. I'm sorry, this is a morning moxie. I invite you to listen to my podcast on the same topic. Actually, it's called Negotiating Like Machiavelli and When. So despite the strides that women have made or attempts that have been made to level the playing field, it has not happened yet. Now, I looked it up a few days ago because as I said, I was doing a podcast on this topic and that Lily Ledbetter Equal Pay Act was back in 2009. So why haven't we had more legislation since then? Why haven't we done better since, what is that, 12 years ago? And it's appalling. So that's the primary reason that I'm encouraging women to become entrepreneurs is that corporate world isn't helping us uh, grow our, our financial future, if you will. And I, I just really think that it's time that we take control. So on the topic of negotiation, if you will, I just want to offer a few thoughts because first of all, when you think about the fact that only a small percentage of people even bother to negotiate their salary. Um, and of that small percentage, 57%, I believe of men do negotiate their uh, negotiate for the salaries at the time they're being hired. Right? So if we even just, did that one little change, we would be better off because once you start off lower at a lower pay, it's harder to play catch up. I learned recently that say for instance, if you had a $100,000 salary offer, but the your male counterpart negotiated another $7,000, it would take you, I think it was 14 years to catch up just because you start off behind and you think about maybe, you know, if you're lucky enough to get the incremental, what is that cost of living raises each year, you started off with a smaller number. So your number's not, not going to catch up anytime soon. And that would only be if your counterpart again was, uh, what would that be? Stagnating or salary not growing. And that's chances are that's not really what's going to happen. So you want to be able to speak up at the beginning of your career. And so each year or in between, however, you know, the pay system is set up, you, you should be increasing based on a larger number. And the other thing is that when you're asking for a raise, number one, you need to have concrete evidence of why you are worth that number. Now, concrete, concrete. I know there's a pay scale or pay range, right, for positions. But what I'm suggesting is that if you do your homework, go to, was that, uh, the Muse, Glassdoor, Salary.com, or She Negotiates. That's a new one I learned about. These are websites that can give you some idea of what other women in your roles are making, or other people, excuse me, are making in this, you know, your particular uh, cat industry or job title. Now, job titles are a little bit, tricky because they don't mean the same thing at all companies, 
But I mean, it is a starting place when you're doing your research and you do want to do your research so that when you come to the table, you are asking for a reasonable number. And when I say reasonable, I mean within the industry range. But the big, first of all, that's one key aspect of it. But the other part of it is that you're able to back up your request with solid examples of how you can contribute or how you have contributed. Now, if you're just starting a job, I mean, you have your past work history to explain or to share, to offer as proof of your deliverables, of your ability to deliver. But if you are already in a company and you're talking about a, a promotion, then you definitely want to have concrete um, evidence of what you've done, such as you know the projects that you've managed, money that you saved for the company, you know, or when you're on a particular, uh, in a particular role, what were the results you've gained? Or, you know, what, what improvements have you made for the company? Because the company really only cares about their bottom line. So every time you're asking for money, you want to make sure you use their language and their deliverables and the results and the fiscal impact. So those are three key terms that you want to be able to speak to when you're asking for a raise. So I also wanted to remind you there are actually four times that you can ask for money. Well, you can ask for money anytime, but I'm saying uh, standard times would be, of course, at the time of hire. Even though the job says we pay X amount of dollars, that doesn't mean you can't ask for more. Even though the job is posted at a certain level, they are almost expecting you to negotiate and you definitely won't get it if you don't ask. So make sure you ask at the time of hire. Uh, you want to ask at the time of your annual performance evaluation. And if you don't have a formal evaluation process at your company, you still want to ask for a meeting. So you can ask for that raise and the end or that promotion. Um, and the same goes with a bonus structure. If companies are uh, paying out a bonus, that's another time just because they offer you X dollars. I think maybe you ask for, uh, hey, I saved the company X amount of dollars. How about a percentage of the savings that I gained for you? You know, so there are ways to negotiate. And then lastly, we don't like to think about it, but possibly we negotiate at the time of our severance package. Um, again, it is based on deliverables. So if they offer you two weeks, maybe you ask for another two weeks or three weeks, whatever the case may be. But again, always being able to back it up with your value you're monetizing the value that you have brought and otherwise provided to the company. And so one of the last things I want to remember, remember, huh, remind you of, is that the pandemic, if you will, is, is, has had an impact on, has had more of an impact on women say for example, where men gained 1.2 million jobs, women lost a million jobs. And that's likely because women are most likely forced out of the workplace due to childcare and or school concerns. So there are so many things on the table that you really want to wrap your mind around, wrap your head around, just so that you are an active participant in your financial well-being. And if you are a W-2 employee working in the corporate world, you 200% need to speak up and ask for what you're worth because the ramifications are huge when you don't do that. So that might've seemed a little bit tough, but I'm hoping you found some pearls of wisdom in there so that you can enhance your bottom line. They don't care if you need a new car. They don't care if you wanna send kids to college. Remember, it's about the company's bottom line. So when you ask for money and you should ask for money, just make sure that you are well prepared when you come to the table. So that has been today's Morning Moxie with Larissa. I hope that you found something you can hang your hat on and I invite you to please uh, join us three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday when we post our Moxies. And again, I invite you to please subscribe to my channel. So I will see you on the next video. Cheers. <laughs>